Hello, you're some spazzy here coming right at you. Palea is a massive multiplayer online community sim game. You grow crops, you fish, you cook, you make money, you upgrade your gear and your house while building relationships with the villagers, maybe romancing them a little bit as well. Palea is Stardew Valley with cutesy third person Fortnite graphics online. Now, I love Stardew Valley and I love playing with my friends, but I, I didn't love Palea. And I'm gonna tell you why. I think without a doubt, a lot of people have been looking at this game and they thought, oh my god, a Stardew Valley MMO. Or at least I did. And as a result, after I created my character, I approached it the same way I approach all MMOs. Oh, there I am. No! Time to fish. Fish! Throw, release, We're not even gonna read that, we're just gonna do it because we're God Gamer Supreme. Here we go. A few moments late. Oh, this one is a doozy. This one is a big one. Wait. 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 Oh, come on. What do you mean? I was right. What game? Come on. That's infuriating. I was right on top of it. What do you mean? Maybe you can't reel in when you catch when it's when it does that. That would make sense, but no one told me. The tutorial tells you. Oh, okay. <laughs> After checking out and instantly perfecting the fishing minigames without any hiccups, I quickly concluded that it was good. It's a nice little minigame, nice little take on it. As a fishing connoisseur. Connoisseur. Not, that's not an S in there. As a fishing connoisseur, <laughs> I do know a quality fishing minigame and it's good. In fact, your character kind of follows your movement with a mouse. And it speaks of polish, which is honestly something you see in the rest of the game as well. It's polished, it's well done, it looks good. And it pretty quickly gave you that Stardew Valley vibe. You know what I'm talking about, you who play that game. You know, you make a little goal for yourself. I'm gonna upgrade this watering can to this and for that I'm gonna farm this crop and before I go to bed I'm gonna do that, this and that. And then you have this whole schedule that you build for yourself and you wanna tick off all the boxes. And this game is gonna be free to play or is free to play it's an open beta right now there's going to be in-game purchases but they're going to be cosmetic which is great for me and not so good for other people see you at the lake but yeah get over here okay jim sir yes we we've literally played two minutes of an open beta and you've already spent money in the cash shop great stuff <laughs> there seems to be a decent amount of story to explore in this game as well. Even though I didn't explore it at all because... Lore? Mostly through the colorful cast of individuals in the village. Life is all about balance. It's Rice! There he is! Which rework is that? That would be the 16th rework. When he's an old man without the magic, they will send you on quests, you get to talk, there's a lot of dialogue. If you read that again... Lore. Another part of the game that I'm not very big on, but I will describe as quite excellent, is the housing. You build up your house, you decorate it to your liking. It's a big part of the game. The standard thing I got from NPCs that I befriended, or little secrets I found in the world, was new cosmetics for my housing. What did I get? Something? Makeshift? Hide rug? What is that shit here? Oh, that's really ugly. Yo, chef, you look real closely. This rug looks like a fish. fish! A new sofa, a new lamp post, a little plant to hang on the wall. And from the little I did explore, I can say quite confidently that the UI and the tools you have at your disposal for creating the house of your dreams is very good and competent. You like customizing your house? You play The Sims? You'll love it. So there's a lot of good things. Why did I not like this game? I didn't dislike it, but I had no reason to keep playing. Why? Why didn't it stick with me? Well, I've done some in-depth analysis, and it all comes down to these points. <laughs> the Breath of the Wild effect. Now, this is not the first game post Breath of the Wild, nor will it be the last to come out and hit you with this intro. Yo, this is literally Breath of the Wild opening. Look, same interior and everything. Oh, Breath of the Wild stamina. Breath of the Wild uh, exposition. Yes. Copy paste. Ooh. Game is lagging, by the way. And we can laugh a little bit about it, you know, we can wink at it. I genuinely don't have any problems with games copying other successful games, mechanics, features, if it's warranted, and a conscious decision. 
Let me explain. The intro cutscene of Breath of the Wild has a clear purpose. It gives the player a promise. It says, hey, welcome to this world. It's huge, it's vast, it's completely open and filled with things to explore. And the player, or at least I, walks out and quickly discovers that, holy sh**, they weren't lying. Palia hits you with the same promise, but then gives you two small maps with a loading screen in between. Uh, Breath of the Wild goes, here's your stamina bar. We're gonna put it right next to your character because it's important. This green bar represents your freedom. Anything you see, you can climb as long as you have the stamina to do it. And Palea goes, same. But a lot of things you can't climb and actually climbing isn't that important. The fact that the small tutorial area in Breath of the Wild feels bigger, more vast, more fun to explore, filled with more things than the whole game of Palea makes copying things from Breath of the Wild feels like something a young sibling does. Like, I'm gonna do what my big sister or brother is doing, because that's cool, but I have no idea what it is. I, I don't know. Am I doing it right? Trust me, I'm a younger sibling. That's exactly how it goes. In Palea, the environment looks great. It really does, but the environment feels empty. Traversing the environment is not exciting. It's just something you have to do to reach the different notes for the different skills you want to level up. There's a glider in the game. Oh, because Breath of the Wild has a glider. Gotta put that in there. Yeah, you don't have a glider yet, Yadipir. <laughs> Breath of the Wild delivered something with these mechanics and the way it looked. If you're not gonna deliver on that, just don't copy it, okay? It's toying with my emotions, making me all confused. <sighs> Moving on. Friction-free gaming. Palea is described on the website as cozy and welcoming. And these are, of course, taglines that I can get behind. Love that from a video game. But after playing for a while, I felt like it turned from cozy to unengaging. Let me talk a little bit about limits and fail states. In Stardew Valley, you had a day and night cycle with a Monday to Sunday schedule. Certain events and activities only happened at certain times and days, and you had to go to bed at 2 a.m. or you would pass out. Now, you weren't really punished for passing out. You, you would lose some energy the next day, but this simple concept concept gave you some yummy decisions. Are you going to prioritize your crops today or are you going to be at the waterfall at 6 p.m. when that NPC is going to do that thing or is there perhaps a festival by the end of the week that you need to bring your corn to? This is ooh, chef's kiss gaming. In Palea, yeah, there's a day and night cycle and some things can be caught at night and not the day, but I never felt like I had to keep tabs on anything. It was frictionless. If there was an NPC I needed to talk to, but they were asleep, well, I could just go to their house and talk to them through the keyhole. At least I think that's what's going on here thematically, but I'm not sure. Another example. In Stardew Valley, you had your energy meter, and energy was needed for all actions. And if you're out of energy, you can't do more actions. So you either have to go home and sleep or eat some food. And food is plentiful, but you really want to be selling it because money is needed for progression. And this again meant that you were encouraged, not forced, but encouraged to do some juicy planning. You can't do it all in one day, and it's no biggie. You can just do it tomorrow, but you really want to get it done today. Oh. It's such a good game loop. And in Palea, energy means nothing really. Well, you want some energy at all times. If you're ever at zero, you will get less XP from all actions. But food is super plentiful and it quickly becomes this small maintenance thing. And if I ever ran out of energy when I was out gathering, it would just feel bad, but like it'd be an annoyance. You know, like if someone lets out a real sour fart close to you on the commute home from work. <laughs> Ugh. This experience is suddenly so much worse, but I still need to get home. Like I would keep gathering things until my inventory was full because I'm out gathering things, but it would just feel a lot less nice. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that analogy. I would describe Stardew Valley as a cozy game. I mean, you're managing a farm. It's not stressful. It's super relaxing, but the small little limitations and fail states gives the player huge amounts of fun decision making and planning. And in the hopes of creating a cozy and welcoming game, I think Palea created one that is just less interesting and engaging. And I don't think you have to have combat or a mine shaft like in Stardew to make it more engaging. Mm. And my final point. <laughs> The not-so-social social game. This is probably the biggest one. What made Stardew Valley multiplayer so freaking good was that you were working together towards the same goal. Like you had a community center and you all had to chip in there and you started talking like, I'll go over here and I'll fetch this thing. You can go over there. We meet up, we deliver it. Or alternatively, like I will go over here, do all of that. You manage the farm in the meantime, which is also this thing we had together. And there's also like a little bit of tension there because you might want the chicken coop over there. But for me, that's clearly the place for an onion field. <laughs> Why is there clay in the food drawer? I. 
don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it was great. A truly social experience where we engage a lot with each other, even though we're doing separate things. Yannipir, what a productive day in the mine. Ak, how's it going for you on your end? Oh, I got a Neo bitch. <laughs> you know, I logged on to Paleo with Jimster, a good friend of mine, and I wanted to play with a friend. And just after a couple of minutes of playing, our dialogue in game sounded like this. Log cabin bookshelf. Ooh, already getting... Uh, what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm building house now. Oh no, I should have crafted my friggin' fishing rod. That's why I went to the base. And then what else did I need to craft? Oh, basic smelter. Thank you. A chair, a table, and a wardrobe. Oh, I got 100 gold for doing lucky coin. <laughs> good comps? Yeah. I feel like, you know, we, Jim and I started off together, but we literally haven't really done anything together now. We were basically running around doing our separate things. I mean, in Palea, you can go out and gather the same resources together, and the reward is that you do it faster. That's all right. And there are some nodes that kind of require you to do them together, right? But we were two people playing our separate games 90% of the time. And sure, you can go and visit your friend's farm, and I did. Visiting Jim. Hey, Jim! James, do you have a pin? It was just your pet. But there was no real reason for it other than... There's your farm! No, we had nothing to engage together in, and we came into the game together. I did almost nothing with the random people I found in the world. How great would it not be if there was a bigger reason to interact with all these players that I saw running around? It doesn't have to be PvP or combat, but just something, you know? And please, please. In a game like this, please add in-game proximity voice chat. <laughs> oh, there's so many opportunities for fun to be had if I could just talk to the players I met in this game. Look, I understand it's a bit of a risk and you need to have a system in place so you can mute and report and all of that. I get it, but please put it in your game. Like, okay, me and my friend Yannip here, we were fishing, right? <sighs> this is the good life. <laughs> and then that was it. We spent like the next hour or so going like. Should we keep fishing? I think so. <laughs> or maybe take a break. <laughs> like, if you're playing the game, right, and you're walking up to do a bit of fishing, and you saw that and heard that, wouldn't that be just so great? I know I would have loved it. I would have joined in, probably, and or, or just done something. I don't know. It would have been great fun. Video games is about dumb fun. Stupid fun you can have together. And, like, honestly, proximity voice chat is, like, the best way to have stupid and dumb fun. I want it in all my multiplayer games, but, hey, maybe that's just a niche streamer need. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is that in Palea, the other players weren't a source of fun. They were actually more or less, like, like filler NPCs in other games. You know, they were there for a little bit of flavor and to create this illusion that the world is not empty, but they were not there to socialize with or engage with in any meaningful way. <laughs> To sum it up, honestly, the more I worked on this video, the more I realized that it was kind of unfortunate that I went into this hoping for a Stardew Valley MMO. Because Palea just isn't. The things I like the most about Stardew Valley just isn't there. And to be fair, they never officially marketed it as a Stardew Valley MMO, but like, can you blame me for hoping for that? No, Palea is trying to be uh, an easy to approach game that I think especially people that perhaps haven't played a lot of games or are terrified and stressed out by any fail states in any game would enjoy. People that easily get intimidated by systems and the fact that you can potentially lose or miss out on something. People that just want to fish a bit, catch some bugs, and then create a nice little farm with the perfect house designed exactly how they like. It. Those, I think, are the people that will love Palea. And to those people, I think Palea is a great game with a lot of potential, but it just isn't my game. Which is a shame because Man, I really wanted it to be, you know? Do you agree with my points? Drop them in the comments below. I'll be down there reading and replying to you. I'd love to hear what you think. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you drop a like. It helps out the video and it lets me know that you enjoyed it. You can also subscribe to the channel up there. Or you can click here to watch a video of me and my friend Yannip here. Playing a game that definitely has a brutal fail state. I think you'll enjoy it. Go and check it out. I'll see you in the next one. This has been Spazzy and I'm out. Toots!